Uh, my name is Emily Ryan. I'm assistant professor of mechanical engineering, also part of the division of materials science and engineering. So my work is uh, fundamentally based in kind of computational modeling of various energy systems. And so we work in a lot of different areas from carbon capture and fuel injectors um, and nuclear systems and also in batteries. So today I just want to tell you a little bit about what we're doing with some of these high energy density batteries. So just to give you a little background of what's going on, I think some of the previous speakers really line it up nicely, is that EVs are skyrocketing, right? There's a lot more EVs hitting the streets, and they're developing a lot more models. Um, the problem when you look at that is the batteries that you're using. Lithium ion batteries are kind of the gold standard used today, and although they're great, and they've really allowed a lot of advances in portable electronics, EV, and everything else, they're not going to work if we're looking at long-term advancement of electric vehicles. And then to what Michael was just talking about, when we were talking about the grid and getting adaptive grids, this idea of grid storage. So what people are starting to look at are new uh, technologies. And so you can see on the left-hand side here, I show some of these different technologies. What we're really looking at is higher energy density batteries. When you have a higher energy density battery, that means you can get more power out in a smaller volume or a lower weight. So therefore, we could get cars that go farther or that have uh, smaller batteries in them. But to really get there, we need new technologies. If you can look about midway up there, you can see lithium ion. We've made great advances in them, but we're really starting to approach kind of the theoretical limits of where we can go with lithium ion. And that's just really due to the chemistry. And so if we really want to go surpassing that, then we have to look at new battery technologies. And a big area of that is things like metal air batteries. Metal air batteries like lithium, lithium oxygen, or lithium sulfur, uh, have a lot more potential theoretically to get really close to gasoline in terms of their energy densities, which would make them a lot more valuable. The problem being is they have a lot of fundamental technical challenges to overcome before they can actually be commercialized. And so that's where the research really comes in. And the areas of this um, goes to are a number of things, but one of the biggest things is long-term performance. If we want them to last for lots of cycles, we need them to be, have a high performance. They don't right now. A lot of that comes from material issues, stability of different materials working together. And then the, one of the biggest ones is a safety issue. If we're going to put these in the cars, on the streets, we have to make sure we have safe systems. So to that end, I said we do computational modeling. We've been looking at one issue of many that are going on in these battery systems. And we use computational modeling to try and look at interfacial stability in these batteries. And in particular, where you look at the electrode-electrolyte interface, especially in a metal battery system, as you charge or discharge it, operate it, and then charge it back, you've got lithium stripping and plating off of the system. When it does that, it doesn't do it uniformly. Instead, what you get are what are known as these dendritic growths, which are kind of these tree-like structures you can see in all of our simulations here. And what happens over time is that this leads to drops in performance. You get capacity fade, so you don't have your, your cell phone or your laptop lasting as long. That's what we see every day now. You can have safety issues. If you've ever seen something like a, a fire, a laptop fire, that's what it would be. And you just limit the cycle life. So what we do is we have modeling that we're trying to understand fundamentally what's going on with this dendritic growth. And we do this to look at, we look at a, different, a lot of different areas of this. But one thing we look at kind of on the bottom Right-hand side is the idea of separators. There are separators and batteries, which are a porous material. How could we design that that might be able to affect local transport and affect the dendritic growth? So could we inherently limit that growth using something like a separator that's already there? We also look at new materials. So something like an ionic liquid crystal has properties which would allow it to inherently have um, control over mass transport. So could we use new materials in the system? And then the newer area we're looking into is the idea of how we operate it, so charging conditions. So we charge our batteries right now, and depending on how fast or slow you charge it, that'll affect dendritic growth. Can we come up with new protocols for charging that would allow something like fast charging um, but not affect the performance? And so we're looking at all these different aspects through various different models and working with different companies and uh, government funding to try and understand this better.